for their park facility tiles and one for their enclosures and attractions. Plus, they need room for the personality cards they acquire. I use a large conference table for gaming at my home, and it's just big enough to hold all of this material. When I play the game at Spielbound, Omaha's board game cafe, I have to use their largest table, because none of their standard size tables are sufficient. But all of this space is worth it. One of the cool things about Dinosaur Island is the degree of customization that goes into each player's dinosaur park. But that amount of customization requires a lot of space. It's probably fair to say that part of Dinosaur Island's fun does come from its impressive table presence. Most table hogs also require a considerable amount of setup time to go along with their table presence, and Dinosaur Island is no exception. It does take some effort and dedicated time to get everything in place. There are plenty of games that annoy me with the amount of setup required for them, but Dinosaur Island is not one of those. I think it's because getting all of those pieces in place helps me get into the theme and experience of the game. Well, that will do it for episode 44. Thanks for listening. Feel free to join the Out of the Dust Podcast Guild at BoardGameGeek.com. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Out of the Dust BGG. Leave a comment at the Guild. PM me on BGG under user handle Radagast14. Or email me at Radagast14 at CenturyLink.net. And join the Out of the Dust conversation yourself at our monthly geek list at BGG. All right, play me out, Tananda! Thank <laughs> you.